Welcome to the first segment of the content we're going to cover, which is motion part one. There are several things in motion that we're going to look at. There's distances and displacement, there's velocity, there's acceleration, and finally vectors. And this is just going to be a quick overview of all of these things. You're really going to get into and learn this as you try and apply it in the problems. Distance in SI units, the standard international units for distance, is the meter. A meter is about 3.28 feet. Uh, it was defined in 1793 as one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. This was part of an effort of the French Academy after their revolution or during their revolution um, to democratize units. Before this, before the standard international units, there were distant different units in different cities and so trade was really difficult because if you went to buy five linear feet of um, lumber or you went to buy you know a a home in another place that you were told was four thousand square feet that didn't necessarily mean the same thing that it did where you were from and so trade required experts in units in order to actually negotiate fair prices and understand what the deal was that you were making when you were trying to trade something. A pound of rice in one location was not the same as a pound of rice in another location. The units being used in different places just were not the same. So the French Academy had this big effort is part of democratizing units and making them something that anyone could use and understand, not just an expert. Um, and so they created the standard international units. And there was this big expedition in the North Pole to measure the distance from the equator to the North Pole. They had defined the, the meter, but did not hold, know how big it was until that expedition got back. Later on, it was defined as a particular meter bar and the actual bar was changed in 1889. Now it's defined differently in a way that we could we could actually transmit information to uh, another civilization around another star somewhere, and they could run the exact same experiment to determine what we mean by a meter, because it's now defer, def, defined in terms of a specific wavelength of light. For other distances, uh, for large distances, we use kilometers, right? Kilometers, a thousand meters. Kilometers, about 0.621 miles. The other way around, a mile is about 1.61 kilometers. If you ever good, spend a good bit of time anywhere other than the U.S., you'll get accustomed to kilometers. It's a very useful unit when traveling. It's a little bit more useful than a mile in that seeing the distance of a kilometer is something that's more common than seeing the distance of a mile. Other common units, one meter is 100 centimeters. A centimeter is roughly the width of your finger. One meter is 1,000 millimeters. A millimeter is, a little, is, is kind of small, but still very visible to the human eye. Microns, we're getting down to where it's harder to see. So one micron, also written with this symbol mu, that's the Greek letter mu. Um, one micron is 10 to the minus 6 meters and one nanometer is 10 to the ninth minus ninth meters. And in terms of what does that mean, you, you may remember that means, let me go back into the equation. Oh, I don't have one. Um, you may remember that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 meters. Um, it's our scientific shorthand because we really get tired of writing lots of zeros. And it's hard to count them all and make sure you got it right. Much easier to write it this way. In the end, you'll find out a lot of things we do in science is because we are lazy. And it's much faster to write it this way than it is to write it that way. On to the next bit. You normally think of distance that you go as what I call your path distance, which is not the same as your displacement. And here's an example. I have a walk, I take a walk almost every morning. My Fitbit counts the number of steps I take and it reports out almost every morning I've done about two and a half miles. That's how far I walked along the path I traveled. 
but my displacement is zero because I start and stop at my home. I ended up exactly where I started. So if you were to measure the distance between where I started to where I stopped, that's zero. A lot of things we're going to do, we're just going to do motion in a straight line until we get to projectile motion, but most motion can be broken up into segments that are straight. We'll use the Pythagorean theorem when the segments take different directions. We're going to worry about weird angles. We're usually going to do 90 degrees. And you recall the Pythagorean theorem. You've got a triangle, side A, side B. Well, side C is given by C squared is A squared plus B squared. You'll also need to recall the circumference of a circle. You've got a circle of radius R. The circumference C is 2 times pi times R. The distance equations for motion, motion in a straight line that we're going to use, involve several variables. Those variables are x, which has units of meters and displacement from the origin in a straight line at time t. That's what it is. x0 is the same thing, except that's where you are at time 0. v is your velocity at time t. That's in meters per second. v0 is your velocity at time 0. And in the problems we're doing, we're doing A, which is the acceleration, which is meters per second squared. We're only going to work problems where the acceleration is constant. I'm not going to be throwing things at you where the acceleration is not constant because I would have to require for you, I'd have to require you to take two semesters of calculus first. And we don't want you to go there unless you really want to go there, right? Going there is fine. I love calculus. But for this class, we're not going to worry about it. Okay, what are the equations of motion? They're really simple, right? Your distance that you travel or your position along the number line or your displacement from the origin is one half the acceleration times time squared plus your initial velocity times time plus your initial displacement from the origin, whatever that was. Now, in most problems, we won't talk about this and you can just assume it's zero because all we're really interested in is how far did you go from where you started in the problem to the end of the problem. Velocity is a little simpler. Velocity is your acceleration times time plus whatever in velocity you had at time zero. And you can see if you put time zero into these equations, you get x is x naught, v is v naught, right? So that gives you exactly what you're after. And again, acceleration is going to be a constant in, in our problems, and zero is a constant, so acceleration can be zero. You're going to have an exercise, a lab exercise, you're going to do around vectors. And in this lab exercise, you're going to have to kind of keep straight how do you handle vectors, and it'll get into more detail than we do in this slide, but direct vectors are really nothing other than a distance with a direction. 10 kilometers due east, 50 kilometers due south, 18 kilometers to the north, 20 kilometers to the southwest, right, which you'd have to break down into a south piece and a west piece, which you'll do in the lab. So when you're adding vectors, you add everything that's going in the, in the same direction or subtract if it's going in the opposite direction. So in this little sketch, we have 10 kilometers plus 5 kilometers to the east. We have 7 kilometers to the north. Now, you don't just add those together. If you did that, you'd get the path distance, not the displacement. The displacement, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the displacement is your total displacement to the east squared plus your total displacement to the north squared. And you take the square root. All right, that's it for our little overview. I hope this helps, and good luck with uh, the discussion questions. Please ask questions as you need to, uh, and get into the problems. Start taking a look at those. Remember, you're working together to solve the problems. You don't have to do this on your own. All right, I'll talk to you later.